Hi everyone. Hope you all are doing good. This is the very first video from the Answers tutorial series by the Knowledge Alpha. In this video, we'll see a brief introduction of CAE and Answers. This video is suitable for those who do not have any idea about Answers or if you want to learn Answers from the scratch. There will be a series of videos ranging from basic to advanced levels. They will be posted in the coming weeks. Okay, let's head into the video now. You might have heard about the word CAE. CAE means Computer Aided Engineering. But what exactly is it and why is it used? Just as the name indicates, CAE is using computers to solve engineering problems. Let's say we have an engineering problem. It might be analyzing a beam or analyzing a structure or a product you have developed or something like a plane which you have designed and you want to know if it flies or not. In the analytical method, we use various equations and calculations to get the solution. While this seems simple, in realistic situations, it is not. It is very difficult. For example, if we have something like turbulence or complicated structures, it is impossible in most of the cases to solve a problem by using this method. And moreover, this assumes ideal conditions and we might not have ideal conditions all, all over. And in the experimental approach, as the name indicates, it's pretty straightforward. It's based on the experiments. In order to validate the accuracy of the results, the experiments have to be conducted multiple times too. As we were thinking about the plane, if you go back to the same example, we have designed a plane and imagine how expensive it would be to see if it flies or not. An experimental approach is not suitable for highly complicated and expensive experiments. It's highly time consuming. And also there might be few inaccuracies and errors and which increases the time and cost again. And coming to the last approach, which is called numerical approach. It is the approach used by the computers. And this is what we're going to see now. And then in the engineering problem will be divided into small parts and each of the part will be analyzed. Then a computer will solve the problem and the, all the results of each of the individual parts are combined. It is actually an approximate method and we will not get the exact solution like the analytical methods. However, the error value can be made uh, so that it can be made so minimal that it can be considered accurate. By using these approaches, for example, if we have to do uh, some expensive um, tests like crash tests or maybe the flight example again, all those can be solved easily by using numerical approach. And the best advantage of the numerical approach is the flexibility. So you can change the product specifications pretty easily and even then you can get the accurate results. Okay, now let's see how a problem can be solved using numerical method. This is the general approach in solving a, an engineering problem using numerical method. In the first step, we will understand the problem, what we need to solve, and we need to understand our needs and what is our end goal. Then we design our model. We use some CAD software like SOLIDWORKS, NX, CATIA, CREO, Autodesk, Inventor. There are so many, there are so many um, modeling softwares. Even ANSYS has two design, soft, design tools. One is SpaceClaim and the other one is ANSYS Design Modeler. However, we'll see about those later. And then next we will divide the model into finite parts the smaller uh, the model the parts are that means the more number of parts you will divide the model into the more accurate will the solution will be 
However, we have to balance the balance the so balance it so that it will not be too time consuming. And for this meshing, there are spe some specialized software like HyperMesh, Gambit, and also Ansys is pretty good as well. Abacus is another software which is good for meshing. And once the meshing is done, then we set up the physics for the problem we have. Physics, setting up physics is nothing but setting up the uh, setting up the boundary conditions. What will be the temperature? Temperatures. What are the loads? Where are they acting? It's etc. Then we'll use the software to solve the problem. So in this case, maybe Ansys, Star CCM, Abacus, or there are many solvers. Even you have open source softwares like OpenFoam and cloud-based softwares like SimScale. So you can use those software to solve the problem. Most of these software use either finite element method or finite volume method or finite difference method to solve the individual, uh, solve the parameters for individual elements or individual at uh, the individual nodes. And then all the results are combined by the software. Then we'll, we can, we'll be able to visualize the results by using the post processor modules available in the respective software then we, we can see we can understand all these steps when we deal with an actual problem we will deal with the examples in the coming weeks we'll see actual so uh, we'll actually solve a problem and then we'll see okay now this is how we solve an engineering problem using numerical approach but what exactly is what is ansys just let's look at a brief history of ansys so ansys is a us based company it actually stands for analysis system even though ansys has design modules in it i consider it as an analysis software because it's used more for the analysis and it is used for engineering simulation you can solve many problems in it might be structural thermal vibration there's so many problems almost most of the problems can be uh, solved using ansys and you can also do 3d designs there and if you're trying to develop a new product or make any modifications or if you want to improve the functionality of a product ansys is a good software okay so but why ansys ansys has a very good interface and it's easy to learn and moreover most of the ca softwares are expensive while ansys is offering free free version to students which is quite good actually but there is a no limit anyhow but most of the softwares do not offer this feature as well and in ansys you have can do structural analysis cfd the flow analysis the vibration analysis or thermal analysis buckling analysis even the electrical analysis you can do most of the stuff all at one place and you can interlink one analysis with the other which is another good feature in here so ansys is quite flexible and easy to learn and has good interface that's the reason ansys is quite popular so ANSYS also has a lot of applications. ANSYS can be used to, for example, in this case, to see the fluid flow aerodynamic analysis of a car, how, how the air is behaving, uh, fluid flow is behaving around the car structure. And also, if you want to do thermal analysis for a brake, when you apply brakes, how the temperature is changing in a brake or maybe do buckling analysis in a column or maybe see the structural analysis how the stresses are varying in a bracket when the loads are applied or maybe see the mixing of fluids in an IC engine there are innumerable number of applications for ANSYS and basically the, all the CAE software we will see them one by one in the 
coming videos now let's look at the interface of the ANSYS so this is the interface of the ANSYS this is ANSYS version 19.2 there are a couple of latest versions and maybe more after that anyway this is the home screen of ANSYS so when you open ANSYS this is what you see so on the side you can see different kinds of analysis systems it has got different modules it has got CFX fluent these two are used for CFD analysis and we have got electrical module and you got eigenvalue uh, analysis here and there is uh, vibration analysis and you got static structural and also transient structural you can analyze analyze structure do structure analysis in transit and steady state and also same goes with the thermal analysis you have got steady state thermal and also transient thermal there are lots of applications for ANSYS so most in this series mostly will deal about CFD and also structure analysis so for example now I'm opening this fluid standalone system so as we have discussed the approach the, so this one is more about the properties uh, so you can set up properties and change the engineering data and all those and now then we'll do the modeling you can do the modeling either in ANSYS space claim or um, the ANSYS design modeler and then or you can also import it from other software like SOLIDWORKS or NX or CATIA and then you have mesh this is a process for meshing and here we set up the physics and also the boundary conditions and then we solve the problem and view this post processor is useful to see the results we'll understand in detail we'll go through everything in detail once we deal with the problems so this is the very brief descri description of two answers in the next videos we'll jump on to basic problems thanks for watching guys please like comment and subscribe thank you